What is up guys, it's Seabrev. Welcome to episode 3 of New Account to World Series. Today we're starting at 716 rating. If you missed episodes 1 and 2, go ahead and watch those and drop a like on this video if you're loving the series so far. Um, not really any new players on the squad, just going to keep rolling through some more games with the same squad. So enjoy the gameplay and I'll see y'all at the end. Jumping right into game number one, we are taking on the Miami Hurricanes and my opponent Brock Tar. He's got some interesting signature series cards on his team, namely Louis Aparicio. Haven't seen a whole lot of people using Louis Aparicio this year. We got Anibal Sanchez on the mound again, so you guys know we're about to give up some runs in the first inning, because that is what we do with Anibal Sanchez. <laughs> He's got like a 10 ERA in the first and a 0 ERA afterwards, so Willie Mays rips one in the gap. And then Ted Williams pulls it just down the line, just out of reach of Daniel Vogelbach. Not much you can expect from Vogelbach there. He's definitely not a defensive first baseman. So our opponent takes an early 1-0 lead. After a walk, Bo Bichette ripping a double down the left field line. That's going to give us runners at second and third. With only one out, Jorge Soler coming up next with a 1-0 count. He's going to throw us a slider that we put a perfect swing on. For a line out but that's all right that we lined out because we had the runner on third we're gonna tie it up 1-1 with a sacrifice fly trading blows early bottom third now JT real Muto up after another walk he rips one into the gap we got 73 speed at first base so there's a chance we score here um, even looking back on it there's a chance we scored but we do hold him at third just because there's only one out after a walk, Vogelbach hits a lazy fly ball to left, and if it weren't for this pretty terrible animation and my opponent having Ted Williams out there in left field, we might not have been able to score on that ball. But we get pretty lucky um, in a couple ways. Anibal Sanchez now top fourth, just dealing. Strikes out Ted Williams looking. Strikes out Mike Piazza swinging, and now he's going for the immaculate inning. 0-2 count on Wade Boggs, who fouls it off on a late swing. That is tragic. But Anibal is going to come right back with a backdoor cutter. Misses a little bit, but catches him looking. Ten strikes that inning. Three strikeouts. Anibal definitely settling in. Moving to bottom six now. Jorge Soler walks on four pitches, and that brings up Danny Santana. Santana with a moonshot to left. Finally gives us some breathing room. That extends the game to four to one. Vogelbach lays into a fastball down the middle. Kirby Yates definitely misses his spot there. 5-1 to one now, bottom seventh, and Bo Bichette's trying to ice the game. All the way out to the one of the deepest parks of the yard. Back-to-back -back home runs on back-to-back -back pitches. That swing wasn't even really that good of a swing, but we got rewarded, and my opponent decides to call it quits. So we take the first game 6-1, to one, heading right into game number two. We are playing against Coveri, and he has the 99 finest Garrett Cole on the mound. I knew this game was going to be a struggle for me just because my players don't have the highest of vision, and Garrett Cole has like literally the best per nines of any starting pitcher in the game right now. So I knew my PCI was going to be small, and I was going to have to be rewarded for some good swings. Bottom first, he throws a slider right down the middle. We piece it up, and we fly out to the deepest part of the park. This would be a recurring theme throughout the game, just squaring up pitches down the middle and not getting anything out of them. This was a pretty awful experience to play this game. There's a good squared up 105. Um, here's a hanging curveball. That's also good squared up. That came off the bat at 94 miles an hour. Um, I am really going to try to keep the negativity out of this particular game, but this is just one of those games where it feels like there's nothing you can do at the plate. Um, I was just squaring up ball after ball, especially a lot of sliders belt high down in the middle of the plate um, and just wasn't getting anything. Great play by Vogelbach here, bottom third. Runners on the second and third, one out, and he decides to go home and we actually get the out at home, which is huge. Unfortunately, next batter is Christian Yelich, who rips a single to the right side, giving my opponent a 1-0 lead, and we just have to get something going against Garrett Cole, whose confidence is all the way up. 
Here's another fastball right down the middle, squared up by Danny Santana, and it's just kind of a lazy line out to center field. You'll see the feedback here. Good squared up 106 on a fastball right down the middle. And then this was the worst one of the game, I thought. That is a slider literally middle, middle. Good squared up 107 miles an hour, and it was a routine ground out to shortstop. Like I said, it was just one of those games where it really felt like there was nothing I could do. Um, my opponent would add on a second run in the eighth inning to make it two to nothing. Bottom or top ninth now, still two to nothing, still Garrett Cole in the game. Uh, and this game ends pretty fittingly. We rip a ball foul for a home run. And then the next pitch, we hit a pretty deep fly out to center field. So we actually get shut out by Garrett Cole, who didn't even throw 80 pitches. Part of that is my fault for not taking enough pitches. Uh, but I did put some pretty good swings on the ball there. Just one of those games where there's nothing you can do. We're going to take the L. Two to nothing. Only got three hits that entire game. So hopping into the third game now, we got Whitey Ford on the mound facing Ronald Acuna. Absolute moonshot to the deepest part of the park. That was a pretty good pitch, too. Um, still bottom first. He's got a runner on second. Nice play by Bichette. And nice play by Vogelbach. Heads up play. Getting the back pick at second base for the double play. That was huge for us. Chris Bryant up in the bottom of the third, bottom of the first, answering himself. Two run bomb after a walk. That's huge for us. We take a two to one lead, but he answers as well. And he turns this one around high and deep to center field. After a walk of our own, we give up a home run of our own, and it's a three to two game. Bottom third now. You tell Marte trying to tie things up. He kind of deked me out by stopping at the wall there. I thought he was going to catch it, but luckily we hit it out. Bottom third now after three straight walks, still bottom third. Bases loaded for Soler, and we put a terrible swing on an inside fastball. That's a pitch we have to turn on. Feels bad, and we get punished immediately the next inning. That's Alex Bregman versus a lefty. That's to be expected. We go down 4-3. to three. And uh, Whitey Ford done after just four innings, but we bring in Ryan Helsley, who proceeds to dominate through the next two innings. Four strikeouts in the next two innings, just dotting everywhere, and then we get Vogelbach up in the sixth with a chance to tie it. And he hits a no doubter to right field. That was an absolute missile. Also in the sixth inning, Jorge Soler trying to give us the lead. That was a slider right down the middle. We take advantage and we take a 5-4 to four lead. Top 7, Helsley's still dealing, but he hangs a cutter up and in. Garrick turns on it. Look at this play by Jorge Soler. Catches it on the run. Turns around, takes one step and fires and gets it by an inch. Awesome double play from Jorge Soler there. Um, Sergio Romo in the game now for my opponent. Throws a changeup on the low and outside corner. Really good pitch, actually. But we're able to get the PCI down there and take him deep on it. Very next pitch, Mike Yastrzemski. All of a sudden, we've blown it up to a three-run lead, and we don't have a single out in the inning. Next batter, JT Real Muto. My opponent decides to stick with Sergio Romo after a mound visit. Throws a kind of cheeky slider that we take up the middle for a single. So that's three pitches, three hits. And next up, we got Chris Bryant. A no doubter to left field. We score four runs in five pitches to blow the game open to nine to four. Helsley still around in the eighth. Gets a line out to end the eighth. He gave us four strong shutout innings. Couldn't ask for a better performance out of the bullpen from Ryan Helsley. Bottom eight now, Fernando Tatis pinch hitting, facing Zach Britton and rips a double into the gap. That is going to bring up Cattell Marte again, looking for his third home run of the game. Four 
Fine as could tell Marte with the pop off. Three home runs in just this game alone. Gotta expect it leaving in a lefty versus Marte in that situation. But bottom nine, we close it out with Jesus Lazardo and we take the victory 11 to 4. We score eight runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings. Cattell Marte, four for five with three home runs, and that's gonna put us at 752 rating, right in the middle of DS. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed this video, episode three of the new account to World Series. Uh, took a really tough loss, but it's gonna happen. It wasn't a good chance we'd go undefeated, so. Um, ended up at 752, started at 716, so still a net positive for us. Still climbing our way through the rankings, and we only did just start. So, um, yeah, the series is going to keep grinding, going to keep working our way to World Series. So stay tuned for more gameplay videos. So, uh, like always, drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate all you watching this. Drop a comment if you have anything to say or if you have any questions for me. Um, and I'll see y'all in the next episode. Later.